Hey everybody and welcome to the Teacher's Wonderland YouTube channel. I'm Ronnie and today we are going to be talking about where in the world do we put our math centers? Anybody know? This is like one of those topics that I feel like gets overlooked mainly because we don't always know where to do with them. <laughs> we just toss them on a counter and leave them. Not anymore. Not anymore, my friend. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell button so you know when to be or so you are notified when we are releasing a new video. All right, check out this cute little kid. Isn't she adorable? Okay, so I have my whole like script for this one, which is crazy. Math centers are going to be a great way for your students to learn and review key concepts. However, it is going to be incredibly hard for us to find a spot to use them in our classroom. I mean, think about it, right? Finding that spot is like, okay, where am I going? Where are we putting them? So if we can incorporate them into our classroom on a daily basis, maybe it won't be so bad. The first thing to consider when you're setting up your math centers is the location of the centers that you're going to use. For example, um, where are you going to have your computers? Are you going to have um, certain sections and certain places available for that? You're going to want to have different areas for your classroom. Okay, you want to have it for each of your centers. You want to be able to have multiple groups. Uh, sometimes I would have one big table that the kids can use. Uh, other times I let my kids use the floor, whatever they are comfortable with. Um, I let them use multiple groups for the students to work on um, activities independently, which could be with a buddy, it could be in a corner, it could be by themselves, really, again, whatever they want. It's their choice. Um, and then I make sure that they are able to access it from all angles, okay? And it's not just, you can only get it from here. No. Can I make it available to everybody? Uh, consider adding furniture, we had a long table. I had kids that liked to stand, so I ended up getting a table or those table risers that you put underneath the desk. Perfect. It was absolutely amazing. Another way that you can use centers in your classroom is going to be technology. Uh, once I was able to get a laptop cart in my classroom, I got rid of my desktops in my classroom, which were outdated as it was. Those were great um, because I was able to really kind of check out how do I explain this? I was able to um, completely open up an entire cabinet for my students. And I was able to let them and encourage them to work in certain areas. So um, they could use the big table for their computers or they can go around the room, especially with their laptops now. I also let them use it, their laptops not just for um, research. We also use it for math games. Uh, for example, you could set up a computer station where the students will actually go to that station and use the one area. Or I say, hey, if you're on the computer, you can't be on the rug. That was also really big because, yeah. Or you can't be on the circle rug. You need to be on the purple rug, whatever you want to do. Um, I would sometimes have the Google Classroom where they could go and create, or I would have videos and they can go watch their skills based off of that. Or they had to do iReady time and they would be able to use it for that as well main point of it was that we wanted to keep our students happy and engaged. So she, I'm going to use this picture here, um, because she's sitting at her desk. However, and it looks like there's a kid playing with her nose in the background. That's cool. No problem. Um, we wanted to make sure that the kids aren't just sitting at their desk. We want them to be able to move. So are they allowed to work with buddies on the computer? We always encourage buddy, well, I always encourage buddy work. I've had some teachers where buddy work is not allowed, like at all, seriously. And they would say, no, go work independently. But then how are they learning from other students what's good and what they can learn from it? You know, like I didn't agree with it. So that wasn't my thing. Another big piece is that we want to make sure our kids are engaged. If you're not putting out math centers that are fun, and exciting and allows them to get hands-on 
Why would they want to go to centers? It was also a great time for my kids to talk to each other, communicate to each other. Like, this is what I like. This is what I want to do. It was fun. Those ideas of where you're going to have your centers is important to your classroom because then you're able to say to your kids, like, hey, um, okay, so here, let's walk through this real fast, okay? If you're starting from scratch because you don't know where your center should go, think about you. Where is your table going to be? So we, they called it the kidney table. I don't even know if that's the right word for it, but it ended up being burn it to my brain. So for us, the kidney table is where the kids met with me. Cool. Fine. No problem. If the kids are at the kidney table and I've got six with me, where are the rest of my 18 kids? Okay. I've got three listeners then because six, 12, 18, right? I'm going to do six on the computers. I'm going to do six on independent work and I'm going to do six on hands-on learning. Where are my hands-on learning going? Where are my technology people going? Where are my um, independent workers going? So once they came to me, then they worked independently. And after they're independent, um, or they could do a buddy work if it's somebody from their group, I actually gave them my carpet. And I said, this group, you either go sit at your desk to do it with your buddy by yourself, or you go to the carpet and you're working on it. Nobody else was allowed on the carpet at that time. Then I would say, okay, next group, my computer people, you need to be the farthest, the farthest from my independent people because you're working on iReady and you have a computer talking to you or you're watching a video, but you have somebody talking to you. So you need to be the farthest way so you don't distract. So I would literally say to them like, um, okay, my rug is, so my desk was like here, my rug was over here. So if they needed help, they can kind of like crawl over to me and be like, I need help with this number. And they could ask me questions and I'm still supporting them while still not supporting them. Right. And then I have my third where I'm like, okay, technology people, you need to be the opposite. So they might be like way on the other side of the room, which is fine. Or they could be at the desk and hands on activities. So, um, my hands on activities actually, uh, can be at their desk or they could be at the big table. That's like high up. So that way they can all work together and they'll just stand and do it. I mean, they were totally fine with that as well. Um, so you need to think, where are your people going to go and what, and where do you want them to sit? I'd love to hear like what kind of centers you guys have in your classroom. So make sure you leave a comment below and I will hopefully respond. Hopefully I can like get alerts to see them because I want to know all about where you're putting them in your classroom.